Well, this morning we learned iconic TV sitcom and movie producer Norman Lear has died. He died in his home in Los Angeles at the age of 101. Fox's Nate Foy has a look back at his life and legacy. You paid a dollar forty-nine for no caffeine. <laughs> I can pay the same dollar forty-nine and get caffeine. Hello. Now, how would you like one across your lip? <laughs> He broke new ground in the world of television. Norman Milton Lear was born on July 27, 1922, in New Haven, Connecticut. Growing up, his parents fought a lot, a situation he would later use as a source of humor in his work. Lear earned a scholarship to Emerson College in Boston, but left early to serve in World War II. As an officer and radio man, he flew 52 combat missions. After the Army, Lear went into public relations and later moved to Los Angeles to become a comedy writer. In 1951, he was offered a chance to write for the Ford Star Review, a variety and comedy show. Before he knew it, Lear became a writer for Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis on TV's Colgate Hour. By the 50s, he began film writing and producing. In 1959, Lear and director Bud Yorkin created Tandem, a production company. Together they made a series of light comedy movies, but Lear missed TV. He wanted to produce a hit television series. That brought him to Britain, where Lear's TV revolution was born. He bought the rights to Till Death Us Do Part, a controversial British comedy that featured a bigot and his bickering family. Lear put his stamp on it, and in January 1971, All in the Family debuted on CBS. The show was a hit with the loudmouth Archie Bunker and his family becoming popular TV figures. Guys like us, we had it made. Those were the days. A year later, Lear did it again, coming out with Sanford and Son, a comedy about a black junkyard dealer. Now, I looked that up in the, in the paper this morning. You know what it's going for? 38 cents a pound. Well, why don't he know that? Just because he's white don't mean he's dumb. <laughs> and then Maude a spin-off to All in the Family that starred B. Arthur. These shows did more than entertain. They broke television barriers, dealing with topics like racism and abortion. In 1974, Lear came out with Good Times, another spin-off, the first TV series to put a black family at the center of its story. The 80s saw Lear step away from TV and into the world of politics. He worked on behalf of People for the American Way, a liberal group he helped launch to battle conservative groups like the moral majority. It's made the country and the media uh, in, enormously aware that there is, you know, that, that this idea that people need to worship God or, or, or aren't going to get to heaven unless they believe the way I believe uh, is uh, insidious. It isn't the American way. Lear developed new TV projects in the 90s but was never able to recapture the spark that made his shows in the 70s so successful. In 2021, Lear became the third person to receive the Golden Globe's annual Lifetime Achievement Award for television. At close to 99, I can tell you that I've never lived alone. I've never laughed alone. And that has as much to do with my being here today as anything else I know. Norman Lear, a TV comedy master who kept us glued to the tube, whether we agreed with his politics or not. Nate Foy, Fox News. So influential. Wow. Yeah, oh, my legacy. gosh. So you're probably thinking back, like, what was your favorite sitcom I mean, of all of those, right?